Hello and welcome to another in the Protect series of presentations with reference to the ArcSight security monitoring platform. In this particular presentation I'm actually going to be doing one on flex connectors. Uh, this was actually from the 2014 Protect conference uh, but it's still worthwhile just having a very quick introduction to what flex connectors are, what can they do and what are their elements. So without further ado let's carry on with the presentation. Now, I'm going to talk about the introduction, what are smart connectors and what can they do, a little bit about flex connectors, and then I'm going to dig into a little bit more around uh, how do you use flex connectors. I'm not going to do a demonstration. I'm actually going to do a separate video session that's actually going to walk through an example and show how you'd create a, a smart connector with a flex connector toolkit, uh, and then some sources of help. So. What are smart connectors? Now, smart connectors, and this is not an exhaustive list, but this is an old list that shows the overall uh, kind of an illustration of the, the, the type of log sources, systems, and applications that can be integrated at the smart connector level. Now, and last count, I think we were well over 350 uh, and increasing every, I think we're down to releases every couple of weeks now. So uh, that's constantly increasing. Uh, and that's great because we're providing out of the box support for a huge number of devices and systems. What do smart connectors or connectors do? Now, it's worth bearing in mind that it's not just uh, the ability to process and do some simple parsing. There's a whole set of functionality that actually is being used here as well. So, for example, we can do filtering inbound. Uh, we can do uh, a level of caching and batching at the collector stage. So we can actually, within the networks, within the zones, within the data centers, actually have that data. And once we've collected it, we can, we can manage it effectively. We can provide outbound a level of encryption and aggregation as the data sent out to ensure that we have compressed and encrypted data streams going to the destination systems. We, we can have centralized configuration updates and upgrades. Uh, and actually now, since uh, late 2016, we're actually able to do parser updates, not framework, but parser updates, which are tiny. Uh, we can do full bandwidth management, so we can ensure that we can only consume a certain amount of bandwidth. And we even have monitoring and heartbeat connections for all those connectors as well. So don't forget that the connector framework provides all of this as standard and this is what you get on all connectors whether it's the supported ones the 350 plus out of the box or whether it's the uh, flex connectors that you're creating to support your custom applications the point is all of this functionality is there this is provided in the framework you just do the parsing process slightly differently what are flex connectors? Well, if your application or log source is not one of the supported sources, that's when we need to use the flex connector themselves. What is a flex connector? Well, a flex connector effectively uses the smart connector framework, but it's designed to be something that's fully customizable around what you are looking for. So what are the aspects of a flex connector? So it's probably, I'm going to start from the bottom up here. So the idea of a flex connector is it is what we call a properties file. It tells that smart connector framework what to do. And it does so through a, a number of components. For example, we have the token mapping, and then we have the actual mapping to the fields and any other additional processing that we want to do. So all flex connectors have is the same functionality with regards to caching, batching, compression, uh, categorization, normalization, and so on. All you're doing with a flex connector is building up the mapping, the processing, and the tokenization that's part of that processing of that particular log source uh, and, and systems accordingly. So it's designed to be simple to use. You're, all you're doing, the goal you're trying to do is produce a properties file that tells that base smart connector framework what to do and in this case to process these particular uh, unique log messages that we didn't process before so there's a toolkit available it's fully supported it's fully documented uh, and in fact actually the documentation is probably too extensive because it's uh, it's quite large uh, but the idea is this is a very straightforward mechanism to produce these properties files which you can produce manually or using a toolkit it's actually pretty straightforward now the idea is flex connectors can be written for various files, formats, and log sources. So you could have regularly formatted files. Now here's an example here. It's just come from a firewall where we can see that there is a very simple and straightforward, in fact, 
this is a great way to illustrate how you would approach looking at and building out flex connectors so in the regularly formatted files we can see that the data is comma separated that becomes that the fields are consistent the location and the type of the data is consistent therefore we can just process that data using either a csv processor or using a um, a tagged field element way of doing things as well which is very simple no additional parsing no additional processing data map to field and done or if where the data is much more sophisticated we could use regular expressions so again we have separated data we have typically separated by spaces now but we also having some additional layers of processing where some of the message information might actually have a space in it so for example we can see in the second line of our uh, of our regular expression example encryption failed comma username j smith now we want to put that in a message field now we can't use a separator of just the space we need to do some additional more sophisticated processing using regular expressions in that scenario uh, that's the more co the common one that we see a lot of organizations using to process their log data because of the way that it's done it's it's formatted in a consistent way but we just need to have a much more consistent and precise way that we do that processing uh, and regular expressions gives us a great way of doing that we could also get the data as uh, JSON data, uh, so it's structured in a, in a specific format uh, that we can read and process. Typically, we get that from cloud applications like uh, uh, Amazon and Azure type uh, scenarios. We could also get XML data where, again, the data is structured. Uh, and this is the important point here. Um, we are looking for the trigger points, the aspects and the configuration uh, of the data, whether it's JSON or XML. So we can see with the XML example, there is a relevant part of that XML definition that says IP address value equals. Now we can use those as what we call trigger nodes and we can identify those and we can pull out the data as part of the flex connector and use that as an IP address and then apply that within the mapping. So structured data is again easily processed, very straightforward. We just need to understand what the log format is uh, and therefore use the right mechanism for the flex connector for doing it. We can also read from databases. Now this is an example. Uh, databases are a great example of, a, of something that's actually pretty unique here. A database is typically structured data. So we need to do a query against that structured data. And then by definition, the data that we get returned is already structured in memory against those fields of the query, the select we've actually done. So all we then do is just do the mapping of those fields. So there's no additional parsing necessary we may need to do some additional processing, but there's no parsing that's needed at that point. So typically from a database, we're doing a, a, a query, we're doing that select statement, we're, we're mapping that data into the fields that we want to do. Or another common way that we see is uh, syslog data. So you know, there's going to be a header and then there's going to be some message. We need to have typically through a regular expression type processing mechanism to be a, the ability to actually process that data uh, and break it apart into the subsequent fields that we want to do the mapping. So again, regular expression typically used as part of the syslog data. But you can see that there are different ways to do this, different mechanisms, different formats. And this starts to, to dictate how we build out that properties file for the Flex Connector. And that's, again, remember that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to identify what do we need to do to configure that properties file to do that processing, whether it's a database, whether it's syslog, whether it's a file with regular expressions, uh, whether it's a key value pair processor for, for structured data. We need to understand what we need to start with, and that dictates the mechanism that we want to use. And finally, just a, a, a couple of quick examples here, whether it be SNMP, which again is it's structured in a particular format, or whether we actually just use a REST API type mechanism where we can query to the data. We typically get structured data back. So we typically get things like a JSON data that comes back that we can then use uh, with a JSON parser to, to pull out the re relevant data from a parsing process. So where do we run the flex connectors? Well, again, just remember what we're doing here is we're taking the smart connector framework uh, that's not got any defined log standard support that's built in, whether it be 
you know, a Cisco log source, whether it be Checkpoint or whatever. It just hasn't got that defined. And you create the properties file to use that. So we still get full access to the, all the platforms that we can run that smart connector on that we can now then use that for a flex connector too. So whether it be Windows, Unix based, whether it be uh, an appliance or even as part of the ArcSight Management Center itself, we can run those flex connectors anywhere as part of that functionality. And remember, we're getting the full access to the Smart Connector framework. So we're getting all of that uh, additional good stuff to do with processing, categorization, uh, the transmission, uh, the caching, and the time correction, and all those other good stuff as part of the Smart Connector framework. We're just telling it that we want to do specific bits of Flex Connector processing within it. So what can we use? Well, we could just create that properties file ourselves. And if you're good enough and done plenty of them in the past, it's actually a pretty straightforward process. Alternatively, for everybody else, like me too, uh, I tend to reserve some of the use of some of the wizards that we have available. Now, we have the Flex Agent wizard that allows us to do the key mapping, uh, that allows us to do typically things like uh, comma-separated files, which are very simple and straightforward, and we can just define that in a wizard. Where we need to do some more specific regular expression mapping, we actually do have a, a flex, ag flex agent wizard for doing regex as well. This is the older system uh, that actually looks pretty good. And it's once you know what you're doing, it's relatively straightforward to use. But we now actually have a, a quick flex tool that I actually do a separate presentation and an example walkthrough because it is new and, and not everybody's seen that, uh, that actually makes this whole process much simpler and much more straightforward as well. So. Um, there are a num number of wizards that we can use to do this that can step us through uh, helping create those uh, properties files. But remember, that's what we're doing here. We're just creating a properties file. We're not we're not building code. We're not writing programs. Uh, and this should not be an extensively difficult process to do. And where we can use a wizard, let's just use a wizard. Uh, so just a quick recap now. Typically within that properties file, now I, I illustrated it earlier on, we want to do a number of things. It's broken down into those three sections. We want to do the parsing. So what is it that we want to break out with a message? And typically we're going to do this on, uh, say, a comma separated file, or we're going to do this within, say, a, a syslog environment where we need to do some regular expression mapping. That's where the parsing comes in. How do we break that message down? How do we break it down into the relevant bits that we want to process? We then map that as to, to tokens. So we map the information to some, some holding token names that defines the types and the formats of the data. Is it an IP address? Is it an integer? Is it a timestamp? Or is it just a string? So we're applying some formats to that and doing some additional processing as needed. So we might have parsed out the date and time. We allocate that to a timestamp token, we define what the actual format of that token is for the timestamp, whether it be uh, month, month, day, day, year, year, or, or whether it be uh, day, day, month, month, year, year. Subtle difference, but we need to define that as part of the formatting. Then we define how we want to do those maps of the tokens to the actual field names in the schema. This is just defined within that, that properties file. It's very simple and straightforward. So there's typically those three sections. Um, if it's a delimited file, then we can do the delimited tokens and mappings. If it's a regular expression, we're defining words and tokens and so on. But the idea is the terminology is slightly different based on the log source, but the mechanism is very straightforward in how we do this. We, we need at least those three sections, and then that's how we define how we do that mapping to the fields for the schema itself. So it's very straightforward. There is some additional things that we need to also include, and this is really dependent on the log source and the protocol that's being used. So, for example, if we're doing and following files, we need to define what that rotation mechanism, where are the folders, what are the types of the files, do we want to process those files and actually mark them as processed, or do we want to delete them when we process them? Now, that will change according to the log source, device, mechanism, and so on. So there's a whole set of configuration options around that. Um, we want to be able to process multi-line events. So is a log message split across multiple lines in a field, uh, or is it extra long with as part of a syslog message? And then there's additional ad advanced functions to do some parsing. So do we want to take two bits of information 
and piece them together. Do we want to extract data from, say, for example, uh, where we've got a domain name from a Windows system? Do we want to extract the domain? And there are specific tools and uh, calls that we can make to the Smart Connector framework that will give us this information. Uh, and we can also do some very safe processing, like, for example, making sure that we process the data uh, for integers, numbers, and date and timestamps accordingly. So there's lots and lots of those advanced functions. It's all fully documented in the Flex Connector guide. So I really do encourage everyone to read those uh, guides, check out those advanced functions, and actually understand what we can do there. You can also do chaining. So you can build Flex Connectors that pass information to another Flex Connector and so on. So the idea there is that if there is lots of dispersed and very difficult to parse, say for example file data or syslog data, which is the common ones, we can pass that to sub-parsers that can do additional processing uh, where we can't do the processing in a very simple and structured way to start with. So typically we, we, we're doing that on text files uh, or maybe even some in XML data as well. Uh, and we can read uh, compressed data as well. So we can, as long as you tell it's compressed, uh, it'll actually do that on compression for you and process the data. So again, these are additional components within the properties file that we need to define, but it's just properties. This is nothing sophisticated where we have to call programs and execute in a particular batch file or anything. You're just telling it configuration options within that properties file, and it's that that, that tells the the Flex Connector what to do, essentially. So how do you write a Flex Connector? It's actually pretty simple and straightforward. Confirm that you've actually got the license for it, and virtually every single organization does. I would really encourage everybody to look up and check out if somebody has written or built the Flex Connector properties file somewhere else. So there's a number of resources to look at, and I would really encourage everybody to do that before embarking on things. But the first and most important thing when you actually need to create a Flex Connector is really get those sample log events, files, data, and understand the structure. And that's the critical thing before embarking on anything. Once we've got that, we can actually understand which Flex Connector we need to use that's most appropriate. Is it file reader? Is it database? Is it a syslog subagent? And so on. And then take a closer look at the developer's guide, the, the documentation for this, to see the step-by-step -step examples that are provided. And I really encourage everybody, before embarking on building a Flex Connector, just do those simple basic steps before doing anything else. And there are some sources of uh, help to look at. Like I mentioned, there's the documentation. There's some additional documentation around the REST Flex Connector Guide because an additional stage we need to do there. I do encourage everybody to look at the ArcMC uh, Administration Guide as well. Do dig out and look at the Protect Forum. Now, please note that the uh, URL has changed. This was actually a presentation that's back from 2014. So uh, this was pre-HP split. So uh, the, the address will have changed on that one. I'll make sure I put the correct URL in the description below. Uh, and then do dig out and go through either existing Protect presentations or contact the community and ask if anybody's done anything previously. You do get technical support on the Flex Connector Toolkit and the Wizards and so on. So if it's not working, then please raise a ticket. But that doesn't mean you can just call support and say, build a Flex Connector. That's not how this works. Uh, you can ask our professional services to do so, but that'll be an expensive way of doing things. And, and hopefully I've illustrated that a Flex Connector itself is not a difficult thing to do. You just need to approach it in the best way. Uh, which, of course, you can approach your partners. There is an education process for doing this, or even uh, tag along to one of our local user gatherings, which will actually help you in this too. So that's a very quick walkthrough and introduction to the Flex Connector framework, what it does, how it works, and what you need to use, to, to use with it. Uh, and with that, thank you very much for your time.